Hello. Um, okay. Hello. So here's a short lecture on uh, the different Britain cycle uh, systems. Okay. So we're going to cover. Um, so we've studied the basic. So we've studied the basic Brighton Brighton cycle. Um, so the basic Brighton cycle. We've seen that is a. So it's a compressor uh, that compresses air by a certain ratio, and then we heat up. We add heat to the air, so Q in, which is really a stand-in for combustion. We add fuel and then we burn it so that releases energy. And then the output stream, so here this is our state two, this is our state three. And then the output stream goes through a turbine where we extract power. Here there's power going into the compressor, W dot C, W dot T. And then the output stream of the turbine, which we expand by the same pressure ratio as uh, as the input stream, in this case the compressor. So this comes out, and then this completes our Britain cycle. Um, so we're going to look at uh, a few modifications. So one of them is intercooling, where we add. So in intercooling, we add here. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to use blue. So in intercooling. There is a first, there's a first compressor, and then the output of the compressor is then chilled. So Q dot intercool. So that basically T1, uh, the temperature comes back down to the initial temperature, I guess in the best of scenarios. And then we compress a second time to come to our final temperature. So state two will be the same pressure as the um, as the initial um, uh, so our final pressure will be the same uh, um, uh, temperature or same pressure as the initial full pressure ratio through a single turbine, except um, it will be at a lower temperature because we've taken heat out uh, at constant pressure in the intercooler. So that's intercooling. Here we go back to black. So we'll also look at reheat. So reheat. Here I'm going to color in red. So what we do is that our first turbine. Uh, then it has a lower pressure ratio, and then we add heat back in. This will be Q dot reheat, and then we expand again like this. So now we have two turbines with a lower pressure ratio across each turbine, but we add heat back in uh, to bring it back up to, uh, we could say that the, the temperature out of here would be the same as our maximum temperature there, and, and then we expand again. So that's our reheat cycle. And then we have the last modification, which is going to be regeneration. Uh, I'm going to take a third color. What do we do? We did blue, red. I'm going to do purple, like this. So in the regen, I add a heat exchanger. Out here, I'm going to put a box. So that the output stream, whoop, before we send it out, so we send the output stream here, zoop, like this, because it's still hot, we extract that heat, we give it to the input, the cold input stream to recuperate that heat. So we're going to look at each of these individually. So what happens, and we're going to look at the influence on um, efficiency. So we're going to look at What's the basic Britain cycle? Then we're going to add intercooling, reheat. Then we're going to add regeneration. And then we'll add here. Let me just check out my notes. Then we'll do the, the different permutations. So we'll do uh, intercooling only, reheat only, regen only. Then we'll do intercool. So we'll do intercooling plus regen. We'll do intercool. Uh, sorry, reheat. Where's my eraser? So we'll do reheat plus regen. Um, we'll do intercool plus reheat, but no regen. And and then we'll do the full shebang, which is and then we'll do intercool intercooling plus reheat 
plus region. Okay, and we'll look at what's the effect of each of these technology and or each of these changes in each of them in uh, in uh, um, uh, what am I trying to say here? In uh, uh, in combination. Okay. Um, let's go. Can I add a page there? Pages. Add page. There we go. All right. So let's start simplest. So we'll start with our. Uh, We'll start with our basic, so basic Brayton cycle. Uh, actually here, let me go and, and build. So I'm gonna build on the right here. I build a nice big TS diagram. Like that, you know, right. So there's, this is gonna be an arrow. So this is T. This is S, like that. Okay, so then we'll do our basic uh, basic Brayton. Now that one is should be very easy. So we've got the, or we should be not very easy. We should be used to it. So we've got state one comes out at state two. Boop, and we add heat, and we have a turbine like this, this is state three, and then we come out at state four. And we're gonna take, um, we're gonna take some basic, so here's W dot compressor and W dot turbine. So we're gonna, we're gonna fix some basic quantities. So we'll say for all here, I'm gonna write it on top, for all of the systems that we're gonna do, the input temperature is gonna be the same. So it's always going to come in at 300 Kelvin, the post combustion temperature is always going to be 1300 Kelvin and we'll take an overall pressure ratio. Our P is going to be equal to eight. So this is and the pressure ratio, the overall pressure ratio, that's the pressure ratio from the inlet. So our P is going to be equal to this is the pressure ratio between the inlet and the main combustion, the first combustion. So I'm gonna call it P2 because this label will change, but here, well, P, well, yeah, okay, P2 in the basic Britain. Yes, all right. So we actually have a, we derived in class an expression so we can find this if it, well, here, let me draw it on the TS diagram first. So we're gonna draw a TS diagram. So I'm gonna have two lines. These are our pressure lines this and i'm going to do it in the middle so i have room so i'm going to make a nice straight line like that up here and then a nice straight line up here as well whoops how do i erase you erase those. Ah, what are you doing, Zoom? There are so many options now. More tools? Can I? Nope. Um, ah, there it is. There you go. Okay, let me just redo this line here. Come on. That's L and P. Okay. Here are these shortcuts. So there's a nice straight line like this. Okay. And these are our um, okay. we have the pen. So this is state one, state two. State three, state four. Oh, I see it made the PPP. Oops, sorry. Like this, okay. So we have the pen. So state one, two, three, and four, like this. So this is our Brayton. This is the outline of our basic uh, Brayton cycle. So 
Facebook views. Like that. All right. So I know that, uh, let's see, T2 is going to be equal to T1 times RP, the pressure ratio to the K minus 1 over K. And if we, here, I'm just going to get my notes. And if we, um, here, I'm just backtrack a little bit so I can give you set up one. There we go. And in this case, oh, I didn't compute it, but here we'll do it. We'll do it quickly. So if I take a, if I take my trusty old Casio calculator, so let's see, a, a pressure ratio of eight to the 0. 0.4 over 1.4 uh, times 300. So the post compressor temperature, when there's only a single compressor, is going to be 543.4 Kelvin. This and T4 will be equal to T3 isentropic compressor. 1 over the pressure ratio, k minus 1 over k. So if I compute this, this is going to be 1 8 raised to the power of 0.4 over 1.4, and 0.55 times 1300. This is a, when there's only a single turbine, the post turbine temperature, 717.66 Kelvin. Um, so the work out of the turbine is just m dot cp t3 minus t4. The work going into the compressor is m dot cp t2 minus t1. And the amount of heat added is m dot cp t3 minus t2. So if I want the efficiency, this is going to be equal to, so the net amount of work, so the work from the turbine, m dot cp t3 minus t4, minus the work going into the compressor, m dot cp t2 minus t1, divided by the heat going in, m dot cp t3 minus t2, like this. So the m dot cps cancel out, this is going to be t3 minus t4, minus t2 minus t1, your brackets, over t3 minus t2. And if we punch all of these numbers in, this gives me, so t3, 1300 minus 7, one, se oops, 717.65 uh, minus the work to the compressor. So t2 is 543.4 minus 300 the initial temperature divided by the heat in so t3 is 1300 minus t2 543.4 boom we get 44 we get 44.799 percent and this should be equal to the formula that we derived in class which is one minus one over the pressure ratio k minus one over k so does that work? 8 to the 0.4 over 1.4, 1 over this, 1 minus this, I get the exact same number, 44.7955. So the, the, um, the, the, uh, the difference is just in the precision of the temperatures. So basically our basic Brayton cycle is, so here I'm going to make a, a plot in a plot. So here's uh, actually, here, let me just make a table. So basic is 44.8%. Actually, here, let me just move it down. Can I just rewrite this here? So the basic Brayton cycle is 44.8%, like this. Okay. Good. Um, let's carry on. So let's do our first first modification. We're going to add intercooling. So here, let me get an eraser. If I can just find the eraser is here. Uh, okay. I'm gonna get rid of all of this. Actually, can I just select everything here and delete? Yes, that works. Select this blob. And this as well. I'll delete all of this. 
and we'll delete that. There we go. So it depends. So now we do intercooling. Uh, okay. So what happens in intercooling? So we have a second. We have a second compressor. Here we come in at T1 and we come out at a higher pressure and temperature, but then we lose some heat back to T1 again. So what happens uh, on the TS diagram here, we're gonna draw So we, we don't compress the whole way. So these are constant pressure lines. So we'll have an intermediate pressure line and what we have here, I'm going to switch color. I'm going to go to my blue. Um, so this is still our inlet state. We're going to compress partially. And then we will ex uh, expand it back out to the same initial, not expand, but we'll cool it back down to the same initial pressure. And then we'll compress again out here. And this is our new state two. So here, actually, let me just get rid of these so we don't get confused by the num whoops. By the numbers. Up. Oh. Ah, this is precision. Come on. There we go. Um, and then we heat, but we have to heat more. Right, I have to add all of this heat over here all the way out to the same maximum temperature, and then we expand out to the same state. So now this is our intercooling. Okay, so here I'm going to label, so it's going to be state one after the first, uh, after the first compressor is going to be state two. Uh, then we go back to T1. This is going to be a state 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, now, what's the... So I can decide sort of the height of this, this intermediate pressure there. I can decide how high it is. So we're going to, just for purposes of uh, uh, identification, is that, uh, or, or uh, uh, just to show um, uh, this demonstration, uh, we're going to take the same pressure ratio between uh, all the compressors, or actually we'll do this for all the cycles. So all the compressors, the first and the second compressor are going to have the same pressure ratio. So another way to say this is that P2 over P1, so the first pressure ratio multiplied by P4 over P3 is going to be equal to P4 over P1, because P2 and P3 are the same pressure. And that's going to be our initial pressure. Uh, that's our initial pressure ratio of 8. So if each compressor has the same pressure ratio, so that lower, I'm going to call it RP prime. RP prime is equal to RP. Then this is RP prime squared, so that means that RP prime is equal to the square root of RP. Um, so in this case, it's the square root of 8, which is about... 2.8, like I think 2.82 or something like this. So if we have two compressors or two turbines, the pressure ratio across each, here I'm going to add, or RP prime is equal to square root of 8, so that they both have the same pressure ratio. All righty. There we go. I can erase. I can erase all of this. Boop, boop, boom. So I don't want to put new pages because I want to keep my TS diagram. We're going to add all of our modifications on the same, the same TS diagram. Okay. So now I add intercool. So now T2 over T1 is, or T2 is equal to T1 RP prime because it's the pressure through only one compressor, K minus one over K. And if we plot that in, so now square root of 8 to the 0.4 over 1.4 is 1.34 times 300. This gives me 403.77 Kelvin. That's the temperature. That's my T2 over here. And it's the same temperature. 
So because we reduce the temperature, T3 is equal to T1, and it's the same pressure ratio. So it's also equal to T4. Okay. So what's the work into all of the power into all of the compressors? It's two times M dot CP T2 minus T1. Right, because this M dot CP T2 minus T1, that's the work in the first compressor. And the work in the second compressor is T4 minus T3, but we said T4 is equal to T2, T3 is equal to T1, so it's the same amount of work in both. So we just multiply by, by 2 here. All right, so that's the total work in, or the total power in. Uh, the total power out is M dot cp t5 minus t6 and same as before so t6 is equal to t5 and now it's one over rp so one over oops one over eight to the k minus one over k because there's only there was only one uh there was only one turbine before and there's only one turbine now so we we went by an overall pressure ratio of eight so we have to come down by an overall pressure ratio of eight and that means that our uh, exit, final exit temperature, so T6, uh, where is it at? T6, 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 is 717, point, I got 66 Kelvin. Because our T5 is the same, T5 is our maximum temperature. This is 1300 Kelvin, and this is always 300 Kelvin. Okay. And then Q dot in is equal to M dot CP T5 minus T4. Uh, and now we have everything. T5 is 1300 Kelvin. T4 is the same as T2 is the pressure after uh, the temperature after each compressor. So 403. So you can already see. So we're getting the same amount. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting that the the um, that the efficiency will be lower because I'm getting the same amount of work out or getting the same amount of power out from the turbine. That's this vertical drop. Um, but I'm getting less or I'm getting much more heat in because before I only had to go from this intermediate point here all the way out to 1300 Kelvin. Now I have to go from all the way down here. So adding intercooling is probably not going to be whoops very good because i'm i'm getting the same amount of power uh same amount of power out for a much bigger q in and i don't think we're reducing the the power in by that much so the efficiency is the network so the power from the turbine so m dot cp T5 minus T6 minus the power in minus the power to the compressor to M dot CP T2 minus T1 over Q in M dot CP T5 minus T4, but T4 is equal to T2. So all of the M dot CPs cancel out. So it's going to be T5 minus T6 minus two times T2 minus T1 over T5 minus T2. So intercooling only, I put all of this, I put all the temperatures in and we get 41.82%. Ooh, bad. So here I'm going to draw it in, I'm going to write it in blue. So intercool is worse than the basic, so 41.8%. So we've lost three percentage points of efficiency. Not, not cool. Okay. Here we'll do, we'll do now. We'll do reheat. Oops. Let me go back to black. Okay. So reheat. Uh, here. Let me just get rid of. All of that, Boop. like this. There we go. 
Um, oh, okay. So we'll get rid of this part of the cycle. Uh, sure. That. I'm going to renumber everything here. Uh, here, I'm going to erase my numbers. Okay. So now when I reheat, what I'm doing is actually here, let me just move. I'm just going to move this. Uh, yeah, sure. Little. Oh, but I, there we go. Just gonna move this to the left a little bit. There you go. Whoop, w dot turbine. Okay. So what we do now for reheat is now I expand by not eight, but square root of eight. So two point eight times the pressure. Then we add heat through a reheater. And then I go through another turbine there and I come out again so that the full pressure ratio is eight. So this is going to be T1, state two, three, four, five, and six. So how does that look? I'm going to go in red because it's reheat and heat is hot. So in red, I'm going to go straight up. I have a single compressor and we're going to add heat up to here this is our initial so we're adding the same initial amount of heat i'm going to extract a portion of the work and then i'm going to reheat i'm going to say to the same maximum so same maximum uh, temperature and then i'm going to extract the last portion of the heat there and then cool down like that okay hmm not so evident now what it's going to be. Um, so let's work out what's the efficiency. So we find, so T2 is equal to T1 RP to the K minus one over K. And that's our factor of eight because there's only a single compressor. So that's the same as our initial uh, temperature for the Brayton cycle. Uh, so let's see, so we said that's, um, oops, I'm gonna go to reheat. So that's 543. 0.43 Kelvin. Uh, T3 is 1300. That's the maximum temperature in the cycle. And I'm going to reheat to the same temperature. But now T4 is going to be equal to, let's see, the expansion through partial turbines. So it's T3 times uh, 1 over RP, well, the square root of RP, K minus 1 over K. So this is equal to, I computed it, you'll find this is 965.9 .9 Kelvin. And this is equal to T6, because we have the same pressure ratio through both. And T5 is going to be 1300 again. So I have the same incoming temperature to the turbine, the same pressure ratio of square root of 2.8. So, so these points here don't line up, just because my, my plot isn't so good there, but this line should come all the way down to here. So it's just my, my ISO bars aren't very, don't have quite the right shape. So we should come down all the way here. This is T6 and four. Okay. So what's the power output of all the turbine is gonna be M dot CP. So the first turbine is T3 minus uh, T4. And then plus an M dot CP T5 minus T6, but five is equal to three and six is equal to four. So it's just twice this amount. The heating, the total heating is going to be M dot CP T3 minus T2. That's for uh, Q dot N plus M dot CP T5 minus T4. Now, T5 is equal to T3, but T4 is not necessarily equal to T2. Actually, we know it isn't. T4 is 965, T2 is 543. So T2 and T4 are different. And then the power in to the compressor 
is just equal to same as before so m dot cp there's a single compressor t2 minus t1 okay so we put this together so the efficiency now is going to be the network so two i'm going to cancel out all the m dot cps already i know this is going to cancel out so two times t3 minus t4 plus minus t2 minus t1 so two times the power out of each turbine minus uh, the power into the compressor divided by q dot in divided by t3 minus t2 plus t5 minus t4 like this okay so i punch all of this in and then for only reheat i find that it's 38.95 percent Ooh, damn that's bad this is all the way down here. I'm going to put it in red. So reheat 38.95%. Holy moly. This is actually... Uh... Yeah, that's bad. That's like the... the, the... Um, that's the uh, that's worse than just intercooling. So all of these, so if I put just intercooling or just reheat, I actually keep reducing the efficiency. This is not good. Oh, why are we even adding these things? All right, then intercool, reheat. Hey, let's do just regen. Okay, so now it's starting to be a little bit uh, busy on my graph there. Um, how are we going to do that? Okay, so that's our first three. So here, I'm going to erase this TS diagram, and then I knew I'm going to do a new version. Um, I'm going to do a new version of this with the the regions on it. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of that. Oops, I want to. I don't want to erase my cycle. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to erase the math. Like that. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll erase the cycle. I'll just redraw this. Because that regen, I'm going to need a little bit more room. Okay. I'm going to go back to black. Okay. So regen. So now regen, we're going to do first just regeneration. So I come in at state one. This is... 300 Kelvin, I'm going to do a pressure ratio of 8, and then I'll have my heat exchanger, so this is my state 2, state 3, I'm going to add heat, and I'm going to expand through the turbine uh, power out, this is going to be a state 4, this is going to be a state 5, but then I'm going to ship this here, and state 6 is the ultimate exit and this is my regenerator okay and we'll keep this regenerator there for all the next uh, combos uh, all right so 300 and then i said my t4 this is my max temperature this is 1300 kelvin um okay so let me redo my let me redo my ts diagram Like this. Um, let me see. Can I redo it? I'm going to try to redo it because my ah, pen. Okay. I'm going to slant my isobars because they're actually, oh, they're actually, they're not vertical, but they're, they're kind of like this. Um, okay. So we'll add. So here's our basic ranking cycle. Out here, so this is one, two, and then I expand. Here, let me stretch it out a little bit more, just so I have room to show the the region correctly. Come all the way out here, and then expand. It's this bottom. Here, I'll stop it here. I'm just I'm just trying to uh, make sure that I can. This is a Catch. I'm trying to make sure, and I'm sketching something that's not going to violate 
the second law. Okay, like that. So this is after the heating, this is state four to five. And now constant temperatures, this goes through the regenerator. So this portion over here and this portion over there, actually here, let's, um, let me put them as dashed lines. So here's my constant pressure line. So this is the actual Q in. And this. Like that. So the, the dashed lines in the middle, that's the regenerative process. That's where heat from five to six is raising the temperature of the incoming flow from two to three. Okay, so T2, just like the basic Brayton cycle, it's a single compressors, compressor, so it's going to be T1, my original RP of 8 to the K minus 1 over K, it's going to be equal to, again, 543 point something, is it 33 or 44, it's going to be, um, let's see, so 543.43. Kelvin, that's my T2. Uh, let's see, T2, T4, then we can get T5 is equal to, so T5 is after the single turbine, it's going to be T4, my max temperature, times 1 over RP, K minus 1 over K. And that's going to be, that's my 717.66. Kelvin. Right, that's a temperature coming out of the turbine. But then because the regenerator is a perfect regenerator, whoops, this is state six over here. Then I know that T3 is equal to T5 and T6 is equal to T2. So I'm doing a perfect regenerator. Okay, so the efficiency now is, let's see, the power out of the turbine, M dot CP T4 minus T5 minus the power out of the compressor, m dot cp t2 minus t1, sorry, not out of the compressor, but into the compressor, divided by the amount of heat in, m dot cp t4 minus t3. So not, not t4 minus t2, because this portion here, that's heat that's coming from inside the system. It's only three to four that I'm actually adding heat from the outside. Oops. Like this. Okay. Um, here, let me just, this just looks a little bit weird. I'm just going to redo these two. Like that. Okay. Uh, all right, so the M dot CPs are going to cancel out, and then I put all of the temperatures in, and uh, what do I get? Regen only, only reheat. So if I put all of these uh, temperatures in, I got 58.2%. Wow. So this is regen... Um, here I'll go back and and I'll put it in I'll put it in black here so so region so only region 58.2 percent Woo! cool um all right so let's add reheat now so here I'm going to make a let's see I'm going to make another pressure line on the middle here, like this. Um, so I'm going to add reheat. So I'm going to do regen plus reheat. So regen plus reheat, we're going to end up at the same state four after the uh, combustor. We're going to extract a little bit of uh, work through a first turbine. Then we'll add, so now we're going to go out like this. I'm going to add a little bit more heat. So Q dot 
reheat to come back state six well actually i'll relabel the states there come back to the same max temperature second turbine and then we'll take the output of the second turbine and send that to the reheater so let me just erase whoops oh that was a single line okay i'll redo it So then uh, I said reheater, but I meant regenerator like this. Okay. So this is now state one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven, eight. Okay. I'm going to erase the math from, oops, I'm gonna erase the math from the only region. It's kind of fun because we don't. Okay. All right. So let's see. So again, T2 is equal to T1. Same thing, right? Because there's only a single compressor. There's a pressure ratio of eight. Starting to know this by heart. So now this is, um, uh, hold on. Yeah, this was 543 .43 Kelvin, single compressor. Then we heat T4 is our T max. Oh, sorry. I didn't finish our, our TS diagram. So then we reheat to the same maximum temperature. And then we expand again. Same temperature difference because it's the same pressure ratio. They're both isentropic. And then we're going to cool. So actually now, uh, because we're not expanding as much through each turbine, this is actually our state three. And this here, this is the regen Poop, poop, poop. This is the regeneration. So our dashed line now comes all the way up here. And then we have this, a little bit of heat loss. We have the compressor. And this is the regenerator. So I would expect that it's going to be better. Because look, what we've done by adding multiple turbines is I've raised the temperature at the, I've raised the temperature at the exit I've raised the temperature at the exit of the um, at the exit of the the at the exit of the turbines. So I have more here. My dashed line extends further, so I have more opportunity for regen. So I can heat up before more. Uh, this is pretty cool. So here, let's do so. T. Oops, go back to black. So T five is going to be T four times one over the square root of RP, because now I have two, this is square root of eight, to the K minus one over K. It's gonna be equal to, and I'm getting confused in my notes now, but I think it's 900 something. Let me just, actually it's gonna be the same, uh, it's gonna be the same temperature as um, when we did just reheat. So 965, 0.9 Kelvin. So before the temperature at the exit of the last turbine was 717. So in my regenerator, I could only heat the input flow up to 717, but now I can heat it up 200 degrees further, 250 degrees further, because I have two turbines. So that's T5, which is also equal to T7. Whoops, let me, um, this is now my state 5, 6, 7, and eight down here. Just erase the labeling so we don't get confused. Like that. So this is T5, which is equal to T7, which is perfect regenerator is equal to T3. And T2 is equal to T8. T6 is equal to T4. Perfect. So we can do so the efficiency now is going to be so the total power from all the turbines is m dot cp t4 minus t5 right that's the first turbine but then t4 is equal to t6 t5 is equal to t7 so just two times that minus m dot cp t2 minus t1 that's in the that's the power going into the compressor divided by Q in, now Q in is reduced as well, is M dot CP T4 minus 
T3, but T3 is equal to T5 and T7. So I'm just going to put T5 here. So m dot, m dot, m dot, m dot cp. So I put all of those numbers in. And let me just go back to my summary table. So I put all of these temperatures in. And let's see, intercooling plus. Oops, I didn't do it. Let's punch it in. So let's see, so T4 minus T5, this is 1300 Kelvin minus T5, 965.9 times 2. So that's the, that's the delta T that corresponds to the power coming out of the turbine minus T2 minus T1, 543.43 minus 300. And I divide by... T4 minus T5, 1300 minus, uh, minus T4 minus T5, and T5 is 965.9. Oh, sorry. There's uh, Q in from 3 to 4. There's also Q in from 5 to 6. Sorry, I got an efficiency of, I don't think you can see it, but I got an efficiency of, 127%, hence the, oh, what did I get wrong? Okay, so let's just go back to it. So the total turbine output is 2m.cpt4 minus t5, right? One here, one there. The power going into the compressor is only a single one, m.cpt2 minus t1. And then the heat in is m.cpt4 minus t3, which is t4 minus t5, plus another m.cpt6 minus t5, which is also T4 minus T3 or T4 minus T5. So there's a two on here. Okay. So here, let me, let me just redo it. So two times T4 minus T5, 1300 minus 965.9 minus T2 minus T1. T2 is 543.43 minus 300. All of that divided by two times T4 minus T5. T4 is 1300 minus T5 is 965.9. I get 63 point, oh, this is good, 63.57%. Woo! So here I'm going to write it in red. So this is reheat plus region, 63.6%. Oh, that is good. Okay. Um, this was region with reheat. Now we're going to do region with intercooling. Um, okay, so, so let's just recap here. So my basic ranking cycle was 44.8%. If I add region, I gain a whopping like 14% of uh, uh, efficiency. And if I add reheat on top of that, then I'm gaining an extra five points of efficiency. Whereas before, for the basic, if I didn't have regen, I would actually lose six points of efficiency by adding reheat. So regen is awesome. Okay, turn this off oh. like this, okay, and let's see. So now I have regen, but I want to do intercooling, all right. So here I'm going to erase my turbine there. So now there's no reheat. Bloop. Ah, no, 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 no. I want to keep, I want to keep my regenerator like this. Okay, but now I have two comp Whoops. I have two compressor and the output of the first compressor goes to an intercooler. So we come in at T1, we compress to T2, cool to T1, compress to T3. Then I add heat. This is going to be 4, T5, T6, and then I send the output into the regenerator, 7. Okay, so now I'm going to go to, I'm going to raise this, 
red text there. And I'm going to go to blue. So it says regen plus intercooling. So what happens there, we come in at state one and I increase to my state two is now here. Let me delete the labels there. Boop. Delete these. Ah. Oh, am I going to be able to delete just a five? It's going to be tough. Ah, good enough. Okay. So one to two, and then I'm going to cool back down to my initial temperature like this, and then heat back up to T2. This is my, or compress back up to T2. This is my second compressor. And now my regen is, so the output of my regenerator is here, and now I'm going to heat up to this point there. So one, two, three, four, and then I heat up to five. This is the regenerator, and then I keep going. So then I heat up to my maximum temperature. Uh, whoops, sorry. Ah, I screwed up my labeling. So this is actually state three. This is I call this back T one. This is this is an unnumbered state. So one, two, three. I go up to five, then I heat up to six. This is real heating. This is Q in, and then I go through the turbine like this down to this point. This is T. Sorry, this is four, five, six, and then the regenerator seven. And then I have this little cooling stage. Okay, so now T2, oh, let me go to black for that. this text. So T2 is the temperature after each compressor. It's gonna be T1 and now RP, so square root of eight, because I have two compressors, K minus one over K. So when I put this in, let me just remember what the number was. So the number there was, let's see, just looking for my intercooling, uh, it's 403.77 Kelvin. Right, so if there's only one compressor, I heat up to 500 something, 543, which is this level of this top dashed line, but now I'm only, uh, when I compress the output of my, the output temperature of my compressors is this uh, is a hundred degrees colder? Um, yes. Then we heat up. So then the exit of my single turbine is going to be T six, which is T five, the max temperature, one over RP, so one over eight, because there's only a single turbine. K minus one over K, and my single turbine output. Uh, oh, we've calculated already. This will be 717, right? I think it's the, sorry, I had it right there. So it's going to be 717.66 Kelvin. That's the output of my single uh, turbine, T6, which happens to be equal to T4. And that's it. Okay. So now we can do the efficiency. It's going to be equal to, so the power out of the turbine, m dot cp t5 minus t6. So t5 is my t max, it's going to be 1300 minus uh, 717, minus the power going into the compressors. There's two compressors with the same power, m dot cp t2 minus t1, divided by the q in. Well, the q in now is uh, m dot cp. So I have to heat up to T5 starting from T4, which is equal to T6. Put it here. Okay, so if we punch all of these numbers in, did I calculate it? This is intercooling plus region. Uh, I don't have it. So here, let's just punch it in. So T5 minus T6, so max temperature, 1300 minus T6 minus 717.66, minus two times T2 minus T1, 
minus 300 and divided by t5 minus t6 1300 minus 717.66 I get an efficiency of 64.4 percent 0.36 ah a little bit better Here, I'm going to go to blue so this is intercooling plus regen. So a tiny little bit better than reheatless regen. This is 64.4%. One point higher. Hey, we're almost done. So that our last uh, um, our last combination is the full shebang. It's reheat intercool plus regen. So it's this cycle here, but now I have to add so here, I'm going to erase this. Poop. Here, I'm going to erase the label so I don't get confused again. So label properly. So I get the good numbers. Okay. So now the output of my first turbine goes to, ah, back to black. Goes to a reheater and then into a second turbine like this and then the output of this second turbine is what is sent to the regenerator so states one two state three four five six seven eight oops nine ten so it looks like there's a ton of states but we don't actually need to calculate any more numbers we've We've been calculating those. So I'm not going to add it again, but it's basically, so how does that look on the TS diagram? Now we're, we're using, on the compression side, we're using the blue part. Here, I'm gonna, just going to highlight it in purple. So we're using the blue part like this. And then we heat up, so from three, all the way out to, uh, hold on, actually, let me redo the, let me just redo the numbering on these states here. Um, what did I say I was using? Purple. So we go like this. So one, two, this is state three, four. And now we go from state four, but all the way up to state five out here. That's the regenerator, all of this. And then we have basically just this portion here and this portion there that's actual heating from the outside. So this is state six, which is our max. This is T6 is 1300 Kelvin. So seven is here. So then we go bloop, bloop, like that. Uh, eight is also T max, also 1300. T9 is the same as seven, is the same as five. And then this is the other side of our regenerator all the way out to 10 like this so we use the the blue side and the red side okay so let's check what's our what's our efficiency going to be um so we're going to need the temperature after the compressors with t4 whoops go back to black uh, T4 is equal to T2, is equal to T10, it's equal to T1 square root of RP. So I have two compressors, so they're only uh, each contributing a pressure ratio of about 2.8, K minus 1 over K. And we said that's equal to 400, and let me get the correct number. Um, so that's equal to. 403.77 Kelvin. Um, T7, which is the temperature after the first turbine, is equal to T9, the temperature after the second turbine, which is equal to T5, because I have a perfect regenerator. So it's equal to our T max, T6, and then square, uh, whoops, sorry, 1 over the square root of RP. K minus 1 over K, 
and that's equal to our 965 point something um, 965.9 Kelvin. Actually, that's it. That's all the temperatures we need to calculate. So what's the what's the efficiency? It's let's see. So the power of all the out of all of the turbines is going to be m dot cp t six minus t seven. That's the first turbine. The second turbine is t eight minus t nine. But nine is equal to seven. Eight is equal to six. So it's just two times this value minus the power going into the compressors m dot cp t2 minus t1 uh, that's the first compressor the second compressor it's t4 minus t3 but 4 is equal to 2 3 is equal to 1 so i can just multiply that by 2 and then i divide by q in which is m dot cp t6 minus t5 that's the first heating that's the first heating over here but 6 is equal to 8, 5 is equal to 7, so the reheater contributes the same amount. So uh, here it's, well, it doesn't matter what the letter is, but this is 5, or this is T6 minus T7, same thing. So there's two of these. Okay, so then the efficiency, I'm going to cancel out all of the M dot CPs and everything. So this is, um, let's see, this is 2 times T6 minus T7 minus 2 times t2 minus t1 divided by 2 times t6 minus t7 actually the two are the twos are going to cancel out um let's see so t6 is our t max so 1300 minus t7 uh t7 we said 965.9 minus t2 minus t1 t2 is 403.77 minus 300 divided by the amount of heating t6 minus t7 t6 is our max 1300 minus 965.9 and we get 68.94 percent so the whole shebang here i'll put it back into black this is intercool plus reheat plus regen 68.9%. Wow. And that's the best of all of our scenarios. Incredible. So we've said before, so when we do reheat plus intercool plus regen, as we add more and more stages, we're approximating the Ericsson cycle, which is a perfectly fully reversible cycle and the Eric so the Ericsson cycles efficiency is the Carnot efficiency so let's just see what our upper limit would be right so if we keep adding stages out to infinity so we add stages of reheat out to infinity and we add whoops we add stages of uh, uh, compression of intercooling sorry out to infinity then our eta max is eta Carnot would be one minus T in our incoming temperature or cold temperature over T max. So this would be one minus 300 over 1300 like that. Uh, yes. And what is this now? This is, so that's our Carnot efficiency. 1 minus 300 over 1300, 76.9. So Carnot is 76.9%. So actually we can look, so the, the basic, so the basic cycle here is 44.8%. You know, we still have, you know, the best efficiency we could get is 76.9%. So it's 32% above. So we have an extra 32 per uh, 32 percentage points of efficiency we can get. Well, now we add one stage towards Ericsson, right? We had one stage of intercooling reheat plus the regenerator. So one of those gives us 24. So of the, of the, of the, 
you know, if this is our, so this is basic is at 44% and Carno is at 76%. So that's a difference of 30, actually almost uh, 77%. So that's a difference of 30, uh, 33 points. We've gained, we've gone from 44 to 67. So we've gone 23 points of those three, almost two thirds. Yeah, so we're like out here. So this difference is one, I'm going to call this like plus one stage, like plus one Ericsson stage. Well, now if I add a second one, so this is adding one stage is, we said what, 44 to 67 is 23 points. And we only have another 10 points to go, not even to 37 so uh, uh sorry i can't do math now but 44.9 to 68 that's actually 24 points so we got out 24 points up and we have an extra 68 to 76 so six seven eight we have an extra eight points to gain and that's going from so from here to there this is plus infinity minus one stages, right? To reach this line, I need an infinite number of, of, of Ericsson stages. So, you know, I do one stage of intercooling and reheat. If I do another, if I do a second stage, my bet is I'm gonna end up like two thirds here. And then I would, I'd be tempted to stop because that's, you know, in terms of cost and complexity and, and maintenance costs for the real device, like we're we're getting pretty much close to the edge. like that. I don't really want to go any further and then and then that's it that's my that's my uh um yeah that's sort of the max i ever want to i ever want to reach or that's you know there's going to be a trade-off at some point between cost complexity maintenance cost versus efficiency let's do a uh sorry i took a short pause there to make sure i had my math right so let's do a a a quick exploration. So I said that with an infinite number of um, Ericsson stages, uh, let's see, with an infinite number, sorry, with an infinite number of intercool and reheat stages, we get to the Ericsson cycle and we get to the kernel limit. So what's the, so we can actually, uh, if we look, we can actually derive a not so hard expression um, for, uh, let's see, for the, the efficiency of this system as a function of the number of stages that are um, that are in the, um, uh, as a function of the number of intercool and reheat stages. Okay, so let's do that there. So let's see. So I'm going to say that so n is this is the the number of intercool intercooling stages. And I'm going to keep it symmetrical, so it's going to be equal to the number of reheats uh, of reheat stages as well. Okay, so what's the pressure? So every time I add an intercool stages, or every time I add a reheat stages stage, then uh, I reduce the pressure ratio. Uh, if I keep the same pressure ratio across all turbines I, uh, and all compressors, I reduce the pressure ratio by, by like a square root or by, by a root, by a nth root. Right, so the, the actual, like the RP prime, so the actual pressure ratio across any given compressor uh, is just RP, whoops, um, uh, is the, uh, it's the overall pressure ratio to the one over N, right? So if I have two compressors, then this becomes one over two, it's the square root of RP, it's what we had before. And if I have three compressors, then it's RP to the one third, it's a cube root, and so on. Okay, so what's the, let's see, so what's the efficiency? Uh, so it's the amount of power coming out of the turbines. We said that's M dot CP, and it's gonna be T max. So T max minus the temperature coming out of the turbine. Well, that's T max times one over RP prime to the K minus one over K. But there's n there's n turbines like this, so n n of these. 
minus the power consumed by all the compressors well that's m dot cp and it's going to be let's see it comes in at t in and it comes out at a higher temperature so it's t in and then rp prime to the k minus one over k minus t in but again there's n compressors like this so i have to multiply so Without the N, it's the amount of power consumed by one compressor, multiply by N, amount of power consumed by all the compressors. And then I'm going to divide this by, um, I'm going to divide this by uh, the amount of heat coming in. And so there's a bit of heat coming in before the first turbine, then after the first turbine, after. So there's one amount of these per stage. So that's going to be, so let's see, so that's going to be equal to M dot CP. T max minus the temperature coming in to the heater and coming out of the regenerator, but that's the same temperature as that coming out of the turbine. So minus T max times one over RP prime to the K minus one over K. And again, there's N heating stages. So I'm going to put an N over there. So we can simplify this, but all of the N's cancel out, the M dots, the CP's cancel out like this. And then this first bracket is the same as the bracket on the bottom. So I can write this as equal to one minus T in RP prime to the K minus one over K minus, minus T in like that over T max minus T max one over RP prime to the K minus one over K like this. Well, I'm going to simplify it again. This is one minus, I'm going to pull a T in on the top. So this is T in over, I'm going to pull a T max on the bottom like that. And now these two brackets, it's RP prime to the K minus one over K minus one divided by, and on the bottom I have a one minus one over RP prime to the K minus one over K. And that's my final expression for efficiency. Now it looks like, so this looks like it's uh, it's independent of the number of stages, but it's not because RP prime, well, that's equal to my constant, my overall pressure ratio to the one over N. This is a P, right? So N is hidden in these in these two terms over here. Okay, so here let me let me close the whiteboard and I'm I'm gonna go and share. So I'm gonna go and share my screen. Whoops. There we go. I'm gonna go in and there we go. So here's a, a Excel spreadsheet. So I defined uh here I'm just gonna annotate this. Uh where are my annotation tools? There we go. So so I have so I have an RP of eight, uh, K of one point four. Let me go to let me go to black, so we can see something better. So an RP of eight and a K of one point four. My T in is three hundred Kelvin. My T max is thirteen hundred Kelvin, and then I define here K minus one over K. So that's the that's the that's the exponent of all of these RPs. So for the number of stages, one, two, three, four, and so on, and then I did up to ten, and then a hundred and a thousand. So if I have one stage, well, that's equivalent to regen. So this is regen only. And sure enough, the, the compression ratio through one stage, through the, uh, each compressor in each turbine is eight, the original one, because I have only one, one stage. And I get this 58 58.19%, 0.2%. That's the, uh, that's the answer uh, we should have gotten out of uh, regen only. Let me just make sure this. I mean, that should match our, our calculations. Yeah, 58.2%. That's right. And then if I put a two, then that's the that's the other example we did. That's the regen plus intercool plus reheat. Right? That's the full shebang. That's the, 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 the full shebang example we did. And then, uh, so this is our compression ratio 2.82 or 2.83, right? That's the compression ratio through each compressor and each turbine. 
All right, well, now if I do three, that's a cube root of three. So I have three compressors, three turbines. The pressure ratio is two. And then we can go on and calculate. And we see that at 1,000, this is pretty much, this is pretty much Carnot. Right? This is 76.9%. So I've I've uh, I've plotted. Um, uh, where is it? Options. Clear all drawings. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the annotations. So now here I'm gonna make this bigger. So here's a. So the blue line. This is the compression ratio. So we see that after you know, one stage is eight, then. 2.82, and then very rapidly, if I have a large number, you know, at 100 stages, it's basically one, right? So I have enough stages that it's, uh, uh, there's basically, there's essentially no compression through each stage. It's just a tiny, tiny little bit above one. And then on the bottom is the efficiency, and it looks like it's basically a flat line up here. So here I've, I've pre-plotted, so here it is, so we're zooming in between one and 10, and between one and 10, so we see we're very quickly, we're almost at a, a compression ratio of one through each stage. And we're getting, well, let's, let's zoom in on the efficiency so we can see what that looks like. And it's here. So you'll notice here, we, we, I zoomed in from one to 10, but we did a, a, a log scale. So, so if I look, you see this minor grid. So this is a logarithmic scale. So with one stage, this is region only. That's our 58.2. Uh, then I add one stage of intercool. This is two stages. So that's our 68.9. So we've gained 10 points of efficiency. And then if I do two stages, then we're at 71%. And then, so this is two stages, three stages, four, five, and then very rapidly, you know, we're basically at the Carnot efficiency. So how many stages practically do you want to do in an engine? Well, then we'd have to consider how much does it add to the cost of the device to add every stage? And how much does it add to the maintenance as we go through? And then we'd see that somewhere around here, it's probably not worth it anymore. You know, somewhere between three and four stages, that's it. We'll just stop. There's no way, there's no way you would want to go any higher than this. I'm gonna stop. So that's it. That's all the alterations to the Brayton cycle.